Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. In the last episode, we tried to fire up a Motorola PM receiver used by NASA to test our transponder. We eventually managed to make it work, but at another frequency. We had just discovered that it had been modified from its Apollo days. It had been changed to the frequency of another later spacecraft. And it won't work with our Apollo gear until we switch it back to its original frequency. Fortunately, we quickly found out where the quartz crystal that drove the local oscillator frequency was hiding, under its little golden hood. It said 22 MHz and something on it. Would it be as simple as changing this crystal to get back our original Apollo frequency? And how does a 22 MHz crystal control the reception at 2.1 GHz? To find out, we first need to figure out how the receiver works. We don't have any documentation for it, but fortunately, we can look at the writing on the modules and get some good clues. So what do we have in the box as far as modules as are concerned? We already went over the inputs and the mixer. We have already taken the VCO out to realign it. I'll show it to you in a minute. But in terms of modules, it's quite telling. There is a 50 mega, megahertz or megacycle mixer and a 10 megahertz AGC amplifier a 10 MHz distribution amplifier, a 10 MHz IF amplifier, a 10 MHz loop phase detector and loop filter, a 20 MHz oscillator n times 3, a X and a half, so that's a divider by 2, and a 10 MHz reference distribution amplifier, a CAD AGC amplifier, a 10 MHz wideband phase detector and a 10 MHz narrowband discriminator and a video distribution amplifier. And last but not least, the VCO is already on the bench, uh, so you can see that it has three parts. It's written 23 MHz VCO and times 96, but it goes first into this thing and then into this thing. And what I think they are is that part of the multiplier is here and another part is there. And you can kind of tell how they split it up because on this, this is a passband filter, uh, 133 megahertz to 147 megahertz. And that's most likely to remove the uh, undesirable harmonics at one stage of the multiplier and then it comes out out of this one and uh, here's our here's our quartz that's already taken out so out of all that we should be able to figure out how this thing works so we now have the electronic equivalent of a jigsaw puzzle and when you put all the modules together so they fit into each other you get this uh, which is how the receiver works and what what it is it's a double conversion receiver starts uh, in the microwave regime, then gets down converted to 50 megahertz, and then there's a second conversion to 10 megahertz. And in order to do that, it uses two oscillators, and actually there are two crystal oscillators in this thing, unlike the transponder. The first one is the one we found in the last episode, is at 23 megahertz, gets multiplied by 96, uh, but now we know that it gets multiplied by six, goes into the 133, 147 megahertz filter, and then is multiplied by 16, but it's the same result. The difference between those two frequencies is 50 megahertz, so here we go, our first conversion. Then the second stage has its own crystal oscillator, and this, this time it's not a VCO uh, that you can tune. It's a fixed frequency 20 megahertz crystal, our times three multiplier goes here, gives us 60 megahertz, 60 minus 50 gives us 10. 
and then uh, the divide by two gets in the other branch uh, so that the 10 megahertz of the down conversion is compared to the 10 megahertz that you obtain by dividing the crystal uh, 20 megahertz by two and that's where you have the phase detector and the phase locked loop is actually encompasses the two oscillators so it corrects the two in one fell swoop uh, but acts only on the frequency on the first one so we were actually right in order to change the frequency of the receiver all we have to do is change the first conversion the second one is fixed so to calculate the new crystal we need is fairly easy we want to receive a 2287.5 megahertz and we want an intermediate frequency of 50 megahertz so we subtract that from the carrier that should be our local oscillator and since it's multiplied by 96 from the crystal we just divided by 96 and this is our crystal frequency that we should get 23.30729 megahertz that's definitely a special order crystal and we need to be very very close because we need to be within a few kilohertz of the real frequency uh, but we don't know if it's a parallel resonant or a serial resonant crystal and if it's parallel resonant we don't know which capacitive loading it needs so we have encountered crystals previously on the channel so some broken ones actually and you know that there is more to a crystal than just its oscillation frequency in quick summary a crystal has two main resonances the series resonance and the parallel resonance in this VNA trace from the episode on our glitchy Soyuz clock oscillator, the series resonance is the peak at the left and the parallel resonance is the inverted peak to the right. You need to tell the manufacturer which of the two you want. And if it's a parallel resonance, you also need to specify the capacitive loading the manufacturer should use to measure the frequency. And of course, it's not just a matter of changing the crystal and hope that the circuit is simply going to oscillate at the new frequency all by itself. We'll have to retune the VCO and the multipliers with the many adjustment screws you see poking through the module. So this looked quite challenging and we were about to reverse engineer the whole VCO when we went on a little trip to a collector we had to, actually to fly there uh, and it's a collector that is both generous and very private he wants to remain anonymous but guess what he gave us i snapped this in the plane on our way back it says pm receiver support manual and it's from motorola hmm does this box look familiar yes that's our receiver and that is its missing manual and of course we went straight to the parts section and there at the bottom was our crystal. Good news, we had calculated our crystal frequency correctly. And then of course we frantically searched if there was a section on the tuning of the VCO. And guess what? There is! The whole procedure in glorious details. No need to reverse engineer the VCO anymore. And it also says that the crystal control VCO is in a series resonant loop. So it's probably a series resonant crystal. And here is the oscillator in question. And you see the quartz, the crystal, quartz crystal, the very caps. So uh, it definitely looks like a serial thing, but it's loaded with caps and L's and I thought you could only tune the parallel resonant frequency. Uh, so right now we have a quartz that's a different frequency on it. Uh, we extracted it and I want to figure out if it's indeed oscillating at the serial resonant or the parallel resonant frequency so I can order the right quartz. So that's the crystal in question that's in there. So here I have my little tester that I used in the previous video and I'm already all calibrated. As you see the series resonance and the parallel resonance 
and I was expecting this to be a series resonant crystal but no the series resonance is right here 228842 which is not 22885417 and that's completely off and of course the the parallel is over here which is 228881 uh, but to me that tells me this is not a serial crystal that's a parallel resonance crystal 20 let's put it where it should oscillate and I, I'm on the atomic source for this so it's very precise so here's my unloaded crystal that resonates at none of the advertised frequency that's on its face and then if I put the 15 puff caps and now it's smack in the middle it's at exactly where it should be okay we wanted to do a, a simple experiment to sell for good if the crystal should be cut for serial or parallel resonance mm -hmm. and what I'm just going to do is power the thing on and then tune it manually and we're going to record the range where it goes okay yeah so it, it moves one one kilohertz right so we really have to order the quartz absolutely perfect we don't right. have much leeway at all this is in the middle of the range i get 22885415 and and the quartz is 22885417 it is oscillating in the middle of its parallel resonance so the middle of the right parallel resonance which makes sense right because the parallel resonance is the one you can tune so we have to order a crystal on that frequency parallel resonance 15 puff loading right okay phew so wait there is more to this story and the crystal is back on the vna because we found a specialty crystal manufacturer and we you know confidently told him we knew exactly what we wanted a crystal in that case parallel resonance 15 puff loading the exact frequency and then he came back and said well it's weird the, the crystal is such in a big case are you sure it's not a, a crystal that's designed to work on a harmonic so is his point that if it were a 23 megahertz crystal uh, working on the fundamental the crystal would be so thin that you wouldn't put it in a, in a case like this so uh, he thinks it's a third overtone crystal and i believe he's right um, and then if we go and broaden our point of view how do i do that say recall and i have one that goes from 4 to 30 megahertz recall and now I've completely changed the scale, but now it starts at 4 megahertz and it goes to 30 megahertz. And sure enough, there's a big resonance around 7 megahertz. Uh, and that is the fundamental. So this guy is working on its third overtone. And I uh, know I asked the guy if it made a difference if it were in a VCO, if you were to tune the crystal and say yes, it will tune at a completely different rate if you work on the third overtone. <laughs> So good catch, Mr. Crystal Manufacturer. I'll respond to him that yes, he was right, and that we need to add to the specification that we want a third overtone crystal. So our crystal is on order, and it is being lovingly polished by our Canadian friends right now, by a company called Laptic Precision. And yes, they really know about their crystals. All right, we now just have to wait for the crystal. In the meantime, we have plenty to keep us busy as one additional test equipment piece got sent by our generous collector. We finally have the PM transmitter, the one important piece that was missing from our test setup. If it keeps going like that, we may soon have to power up the complete spaceship. Anyhow, see you in the next episode.